Hey, this is Matt. Once again, we're about to do another review. There's another paid request this time for Nick. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, reviews, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Prisoners of the Ghost Land, which came out last year and it stars Nicholas Cage. Now, this did a lot of bad reviews. I can understand people not liking the film. I can understand. Because to me, I don't mind it, but it's a missed opportunity. It's nowhere near Nick Cage's Mandy, Willy's Wonderland, even Color Out of Space. It's not. It's a missed opportunity. But I don't... It was one of those, like, maybe two and a half, three out of five, maybe. But I don't think it's nearly a D minus bad. I don't think it's nearly a 4.2 out of 10 bad. I've seen much, much worse. Much worse. I mean, A24 horror films like Midsommar and Hereditary with the Burger King Crown and The Witch and The Killing of a Sacred Deer. This movie's confusing. Those movies are confusing. Or they're muddled in storyline. Or they have pretty pictures. But at least this one, it still felt shorter. It was more quirky. Nick Cage, at least he did a little bit of a frenzy performance, but a fun one. Nick Cage gets one of his testicles blown off. <laughs> and while not as great and crazy as I wish it was, he still finds a couple people with a little sword that he looks like Baraka from Mortal Kombat at the end. And I think the beginning and ending of this film is decent. The middle, though, is the big problem for me because it's rather dull. I do think it needed also a lot more action. I think it would have worked better as more of an adventure story. And on the way of this journey, there's all these different like pieces of foot chase, car chase, or shootouts that could have happened. That's what I mean by missed opportunity. Whether because the director's not a big action guy or, or something else to that effect. Or... Gore does not help a film, but this film could have used gore as a bit of spicing on, on the meal, so to speak. So it's one of those films that I don't mind. But I've seen Nostalgia Credits movies. I've seen Feeders 1 and 2. I've seen, again pretentious as fuck movies like <laughs> when I say A24 I like Uncut Gems I like the Disaster Artists I'm talking about their fucking horror films or shit like The Green Knight like I would rather watch this film again than The Green Knight The Green Knight bore the shit out of me this one the bit middle was dull but at the same time I'm still like this is weird so I'm not that bored either like this is a film I would have seen Maybe in an 80's VHS tape. Or, okay, this is a weird fucking movie. It's not a great, like, 5 out of 5 star movie, but... Like, you just see, like, people have, like, a little bit of a cult fan base for it. <clears throat> for some of his eccentric stuff. Because the, the premise of the film is Nick Cage. He was a bank robber. He was with another guy. Things go, went awry because the other guy went crazy and shot some people. Nick Cage tried to stop him. But then he's just put into this mission by Bill Mosley, Chop Top from Texas Chainsaw Master 2, where we don't put these bombs on you so that you do what we say. So it's a little bit like Hell Comes to Fraud Town, only that was Roddy Piper with the crotch area. And Hell Comes to Fraud Town is better than this movie, I'll say that. But you don't go into this wasteland and you don't get one of my granddaughters who is actually the girl who is the mummy in Tom Cruise's The Mummy. She was also, I believe, the female alien in Star Trek Beyond. And you, But it's one of Bill Mosley's set slaves. And Bill Mosley dressed like Boss Hogg from Toots of Hazard. It was cool to see Nick Cage and Bill, Bill Mosley in the same scenes together. Nick Cage, he's a bit crazed, but I, I thought he did a decent job. Uh, he was fun to watch. He wasn't annoying like Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. He was crazed but decent. And he got a couple fun lines. 
well, there's one in particular where he's like, you know, three days ago, I didn't. I, if I knew that I'd be here with one arm and one testicle to deal with you bitches, <laughs> that did make me laugh and smile. And one arm is because there's like an explosive that goes off, so his arm's a bit fucked up. It, I mean, again, a film isn't good just because of gore, but this is a film where gore would have helped, like I said, with the like spices, spices on a meal, accentuate things. But I like the director, some of his direction. Or I should say, like, this is a movie that I did. When people give all those A24 horror films a pass, I'm like, those are boring, those are longer, those are slower, those are more, some of them are just as muddled. And oh, it's, look how pretty. I mean, this film is prettier. At least there's some cool production design. Whether it be of the, the ghost land area. Where these people try to take this clot down. You see little details here or there. Or Bill Mosley's town. It's like Japan mixed in with the Wild West. Weird combination. And some of the costumes and design. And just weirdness. Like when they bring Nick Cage out for his mission. They have him in a loincloth. And some girls are laughing. So this is the point where the taste takes it off, just throws that at a girl's face. And there are times where Bill Mosley and the whole group are doing this weird clapping. And Nick Cage looked around, he's looking like I feel like, what the fuck is this? But it's just like the weirdness factor. And then you have like this mute samurai, who's actually the lead guy in this film called Versus back in the day, 2000. Well, that was a movie that was confusing as hell, but at least that was wall to wall action. I think if it went more that gonzo filmmaking of wall to wall action, this, I think this is what people would have wanted. That's what I mean, like the middle section is where it drags, and then where it's. I, I can barely tell you what it's about. <laughs> but, like, when it shows a flashback to the bait robbery, there's some nice color schemes where people in very bright yellow or red colors, this gumball machine, vibrant colors of this little kid who has a cup full of gumballs. I'm like, you don't eat all that, kid? Really? You don't swallow those gumballs? I think there's some nice style in this movie. I do appreciate the style. And like I said, Nick Cage and Bill Mosley, it's nice to see them in the film. When he goes on this journey, I, yeah, it should have been more like an adventure story. Whether on the way up or the way back. But there's stuff that's confusing because the guy who was part of the bank robbery, spoilers. Because I don't know how else to explain this. He sees them with these group of people and maybe they're ghosts, I guess. And there's at least two times where Nick Cage gets knocked down. He sees these visions that are taunting him. And ghosts. And like I said, there's some nice style. But as I'm trying to gather what's going on. And something about a backstory where there's toxic waste. And there's an accident. And it creates this wasteland. And there's mutants. But then these people maybe are ghosts. And there's a point where his buddy comes out. Looking like one of the Hills of Eyes mutants. And... It's time for us all to get out. And then he steps back and then there's like this explosion behind him. Looking like a mushroom cloud. And, but maybe, he's, I don't know what the fuck that was all about. It flew over my fucking head. For what I understand, for what I understand that's part of the director's calling card. So maybe that's the issue. But... Uh, there are some interesting ideas. Like when Nick Cage first gets to the town, there's people that are kind of half comatose and they have these like mannequin pieces put onto them. Like because they're comatose, they have people are dressing them in this mannequin outfit. So at times they kind of turn and look at Nick Cage and like, oh, that's a bit weird, creepy. And I mean, again, not every movie that Nick Cage, a bomb goes off and blows up one of his, blows off one of his testicles. I think, and the way Nick Cage reacts, that that was 
I thought pretty funny and like there's some weird craziness to it and that kept it at least somewhat interesting but it's in the middle portion when he's knocked out because of that that he gets back up and then there's like these zombies or where the hell they were I don't know where they came from and Nick Cage is fighting some of them and then this little explosive goes off in the arm like, you really needed someone that really could capture fight action scenes with much more gusto and much more efficiency. I think that would really help the proceedings. And this middle portion where he's knocked out a second time and he has his vision and he's talking with his townsfolk and some of them are kind of weird townsfolk. And then he sees his buddy and it, then it goes back to Bill Mosley, what he's doing with his slaves and oh, one of the people that tried to escape earlier, is brought back, and he tells the samurai to kill her, and the samurai doesn't want to do it, but he has to do it. The movie slowed down in this area, and it's like, eh. Okay, is that, it's losing a bit of interest, it's losing a bit of intrigue. It needed to be much more crazy, exciting. that's what I mean, if it was Nick Cage and the girl going on this journey on this wasteland, like all these weird, it needed... I think action, gusto, choreography, chase scenes, if you put that in the middle, I think it would have helped. People would... That's the thing. A movie could be confusing if you give them a gusto, insanity... I mean, look at the, that film House from the 70s. That's a weird fucking movie that's confusing, but you're kind of enjoying it. Or Versus from 2000. That's a... That's a movie that starts out with something about 666 portals and something in the fucking woods and this is portal 400 and something. I mean, you try to explain the plot in that movie. But people enjoy it because this Evil Dead... If you, you need... This need like an Evil Dead 2 energy boost. That's what it needed. And it seems like initially that's what's going to go and it, it doesn't fully capitalize on that. And that's one of his mistakes. It's... It should have fully capitalized, put some like monsters and creatures and weirdness and blood and, you know, just th that's what it needed to do. And it didn't quite do it. And I think that's where the disappointment comes in. It tries to do a little bit at the end, where when going back to the town, he's got like this helmet on and he's got this little piece on his arm that got fucked up, he's got like a little sword. There's a bit of gunplay. The sound effects of the guns are not that... They seem like they should have a lot more power to the sound effects of the guns. They just sound a bit soft. And like with the sword play, it should be a bit more blood gusto in that. Some of the supporting actors... Like this one girl who is friends with, I forget the actress's name, I almost said Sophia Vergara, that's not her. The, the girl who's the mummy in Tom Cruise the Mummy, her. She has a friend who is forced to be with Bill Mosley. When we come back to Bill Mosley, she's trying to deal with Bill Mosley. That Asian lady, she wasn't the best actress. She got a little bit grating in her voice from time to time. Maybe it's not the actress, it's just the way she was directed. But I mean, the third act, you did a bit of sword play. Like, Nick Cage and this guy's fighting, but they're also fighting these other guys, and they're fighting with each other. And I wish there was a bit more intricate choreography. But at the same time, it's like, okay, this is alright, this is okay. I, I, compared to... Maybe because I'm in the frame of mind that you have to... Put it in my shoes. I've seen boring as hell Bruce Willis direct video films where nothing much happens. I've seen films like Bat Trace with Sylvester Stallone or Killing Gunther with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've seen dozens of direct video Steven Seagal movies. I've seen Razor Teeth. I've seen Hell's Highway. I've fucking seen. Shit, I'll turn you white. I've seen the amazing bulk. I've seen all this other horrendous shit. So when I see this, I'm like, eh, this is a reprieve. This is like, it's flawed. It's not good. 
well, it's not great, but the beginning and ending I thought was decent. The middle needed to be improved, and I'm like, eh, it was okay. But I think that's the thing for me. It it should be better than okay. That's what that's why I say it's a missed opportunity. The be, the middle was just dull. The 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 middle section needed some pumping up. They needed some Evil Dead to insanity and creativity, camera work, angles, action, fight. It needed more of that. You know, and it needed a bit a bit more, maybe a bit more ironing out of the plot, the story. If it did some of that stuff, it would have been improved. So, it's not a film that I would say is underrated. It's not a film I would say is a gem. It's just a film like, eh. I didn't hate it. I don't think it's a 4.2 bad. 5.2, 5.4, I could see. 4.2, no. 4.2, I'm like, this has, this still has more gold for it than any of those other fucking, some of the other shit I've said. Listen, I appreciate Nick Cage doing these weird films, whether they're flawed or not. Because at least Nick Cage is trying. I don't think Nick Cage is bored. I don't think Nick Cage is going by the numbers here. And like I said, at least, I think it's, it was worth a watch for me. It was worth a watch. So I felt I'd probably rewatch a Dan or Byron DVD or something, but it was it was worth a watch. I'm like, again, it's flawed, but I've seen much fucking worse. I've seen much fucking worse. I'd rather watch this in the new Chainsaw Master film. I'd rather watch this in Stream 45. So maybe because I went into it with low to no expectations. Maybe because I've seen a lot of worse shit. But I thought, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen much worse. So with that said, uh, thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.